pricing is a snapshot in town, time. What do I mean? If I list my house today, if my comps on my property today are $500,000 and they look like $500,000 and they feel like $500,000 and the last two sales have been $500,000, then the house probably should be listed and sold for around what? $500,000. $500, Absolutely. And that's what I would tell the seller. However, if the seller lists his house for $500,000 and trying to get $500,000, and the guy next door with a model match has to sell and move because of a job transfer, mm -hmm. and he's getting some of his costs paid for in the transaction, and he can afford to sell it because he wants to move, he's getting a really nice job increase, you know, he's going to, uh, his company's paying for some of his costs, and he's going to be making $50,000, $60,000 a year more in his new job in Las Vegas, then he might say, or she might say, I'll take $10,000 less, I just got to get moved. So the five hundred dollars now becomes what? $490,000. $490. So did the property really go down in value, or because of the motivation of the seller, it we needed to move. Motivation. However, though, the price becomes 490. You got it? So if the seller doesn't have to sell, he doesn't have to take the 490. He can live with the 500, but he's not going to sell it as quickly as the guy's going to sell it for 490. So that's what happens in a marketplace. It's a snapshot in time. On Tuesday, I listed it for 500. It should be 500. Everything says it's 500. And on Thursday, the guy next door lists his house and sells it for 490. That's my now new snapshot in time. And that may be the new comp. Do you get this? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the comp. And it has nothing to do with you didn't, you didn't do this. This isn't your fault. You didn't screw up the marketplace. You didn't screw up the client. It's a snapshot in time. That's what's going on. And so it's not a, what we are going to be, so let's go one step further. What we sold and closed our house for three months ago may not be what it can sell and close for today. Because three months, from, three months ago, we sold the house and it closed escrow today, and that's our new comp. Right? But, but that's not, that was 90 days ago. What happened in the last 90 days? What happened? Properties went up, uh, in, inventory went up, inventory went up, and sales fell off. So if the person has to sell, they're probably going to sell for something less or take longer time. You have to be prepared for either one. And you have to study your market and know what's going on. Now you know when you go to your listing appointment, wow, that house should be 500, but because we've had this steady inc incline of active properties and a steady decline of pending properties, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I'm not sure I can get you that price today, and here's why. But you have the stats. Get it? And you've got to, that's why you have to study your market. That's why you have to know what's going on in the different areas. Do you think this could help you close a couple more deals? Yes. Do yes. yes. you think it can help you get a couple more price reductions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It did help me with taking one of my listings, door knocking and falling up. When I told them, you know what, we're looking at more little arrows facing down. Are you okay with like losing maybe twenty or $30,000 maybe in the next six months? Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, okay, well, let's go ahead and put it on the market and okay. I'll take that risk. Good job. So Sandra's talking about taking a snapshot of your page, your listing, uh, your, your MLS page, where all the arrows, in, instead of pointing up for green, which used to be, let's say, six, eight, ten months ago, today red. they're pointing down and they're red. And that's a great <laughs> visual. Just like, look, this isn't the end all, the be all, the end all. This, what I'm giving you here, that's another great visual. Your clients need a visual, they don't need the words. Get it? 
It's yeah. not enough to tell them what's going on. You have to show them. Words, you know, they, they talk about this a lot, where words, uh, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so make sure you know how to do this. Make sure that you can, you can print it out, unlike me, <laughs> and, um, and go from there. Okay, questions on this? Good job. Did that, that help there, Gary? It yeah, does. Sir? Okay, any other questions on this? Any thoughts? Okay, now everybody's got it. You know how to do this now? Yes. Good. Okay, so switch gears with me, and let's talk about you got the listing. Put a line in your page. You got the listing. You've been chasing a listing and chasing a listing because we teach you to follow up aggressively. We teach you to make the phone calls. We teach you to go out and door knock. Now, so you finally did that and you've got a client. I'm going to close this. You have a client that said that come, come do a listing presentation. You do your listing presentation. You bring all of these pieces with you. They like you. you don't, they don't list with you that night. But because we teach you to follow up like crazy, a week or so later, they list with you. Feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Great. Then what you do is you go to work to get the listing on the MLS, get the sign ordered, uh, get a flyer ordered on the property, and the client doesn't hear from you, not because you're being, because um, you're doing the wrong, not because you're doing the wrong thing. You're working, but they don't hear from you because you're over here working, and you've been chasing them like crazy for 30, 40, 50 days, and then all of a sudden they don't hear from you for two or three or four days. What are they thinking? Wow. <laughs> they are furious. They say, I was right. I knew that person wasn't going to follow up. I knew that person, as soon as they got the listing, was going to head for the hills. And that's what they did. Now, it's the furthest thing from the truth. But perception is everything. And you're not calling. You're not touching base with them. Can you see how they could get mad at you? Yes. Yes. And has there been situations where the client calls and say, where are you? What's going on? I mean, you spent this whole time creating this lousy flyer, you know, and it's black and white and it's a bad copy of a bad copy. And my dog. And my, and my, yeah, and my dog and my and my, and my whatever, 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 you know, or, um, or the three or four days later, you know, you, you, you forgot to call the sign up the first day. You forgot. Stuff happened. So you call it up the second day, but the second day is a Saturday, okay? I took the listing on a Friday, second day, Saturday. The, the sign company had already made their plans for Saturday to put signs in. They don't put signs in on Sunday. You know, they get around to it because they don't service that area on Monday. They get around to it on Tuesday, but you took the listing on Friday. Hey, where's my sign? What's going on? Where's my sign? Where's my advertising? Where are you going to put this thing on the on the MLS? What's going on? My my agents, my uh, the agent who was bugging me to try to get the listing that I gave it to you instead of them, they're telling me it's not even in the MLS yet. You had any phone calls like that? Huh? You know you do. And only because you were doing your job, but you didn't connect and communicate on a regular basis. So. I wrote an outline here. Uh, we've been, actually I wrote this last year or the year before when our inventory raised a little bit. So I brought this back out. I'll share it with all you guys in a little bit. But basically, I wrote here, when we get a listing, we're excited to get the sales commission and the client is excited to get their home sold. We are some, where we sometimes drop the ball is when we don't communicate with the client within a week and, uh, this, and then signing the listing. We know that there's a lot of work to be done to put the house on the MLS, advertising, etc. but our clients don't. When they don't hear from us, they get frustrated and they start asking us to do things like hold open houses, advertise in their favorite newspapers, and if they don't feel they're being communicated with in the conversations, 
uh, they get to become more difficult, especially when you're asking for price reduction. Mm -hmm. right. Happens, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So here's what I want you to do. If you could take out a pencil and paper and write this down, or you and or you can get a copy of this. First thing you do as soon as you take out take the listing, you go back to the office and you pre-address and stamp five or six envelopes. Just five or six envelopes to the client. Five or six envelopes to the seller, and you're going to use those to create, to, uh, to communicate with the seller on every activity that you're doing. So, you get back to the office, whether you do it that evening or the next morning, and you put your MLS, uh, and you put your listing into the MLS, you get all the information in. Check your work. Please, before you submit it, print it out and recheck your work. Make sure it's accurate, okay? Because there's always little typos, there's little type things that go into there. And what I want you to do then is put it in the MLS, make a copy, make two copies, uh, one for you and one for a file that you're going to keep on this. You put every Thing you do into a file that you're going to have at your desk on each property, each listing. You're going to send it by email and you're going to send the paper by snail mail. Now the client's going to get an email from you right away and the client's going to get something from you hopefully the next day. Okay? That's going to be a copy of their listing with a little note. doesn't have to be anything pretty uh, nicer than just a good piece of information. Here's, it, here's your multiple listing uh, in the MLS. Just wanted to let you know what was going on. If you, when you get the sign uh, uh, on the property, you call it up, email them, call up the sign. They said it should be up in 72 hours. Always give yourself an extra day. Give them an email, pop a little note, just adjust a note. Sign should be up in a day or two. Do me a favor, when the sign gets installed, just text me or email me. Let me know that it is. Okay? So you get that. Now, two or three days after the property goes into the MLS, you should be starting to populate on the websites. Okay? Century21.com, Century21masters.com, uh, Realtor.com, Trilia, Zillow, etc., etc., etc. Your own website. Get the... make. Again, go into those websites, double check for errors, print them out, put it in an envelope, and don't wait to get six or eight and put them in an envelope to save a 40 or 50 cent stamp. Don't do that. Send one or two at a time. As soon as you get them, send them less you're, often. You're, you guys get the better touching more this, often and email them the link. So now, Almost every day for the next week or so, they're getting touched by you by mail and by email. You guys with me on this? Yes. Okay, send it over to the advertising department. Um, and then you need to make sure, uh, I don't have anybody here that knows that. So in, our, uh, in Covina is our advertising department. Make sure it gets sent over there to make sure your properties get into the advertising queue. And when it gets advertised, you will get an email sent to you with a copy of the ad when it runs. Then again, print it out, fold it up, send it to your client. Also send a copy in an in a email link. Um, when you send to Cindy, um, I think it's called New Listing, New listing yeah, new listings yeah. dot com or new no, listing century twenty one masters dot com. Yeah. Okay. So Cindy wants to see those in part so to make sure that the contracts are correct and mm -hmm. what's checked off is checked off. And and in those contracts, by the way, are things that protect you, like uh, making sure that that it's uh, checked off that you uh, mm -hmm. uh, that at the end of the listing, you can put the name of your clients in there for certain periods of time. I can't tell you how many of our agents don't check that off. <clears throat> and it's a way for agents to get money. So she'll remind you, hey, this is missing. 
but we also run our own, this is a service from us for you, that make sure that you get all the websites, and we, we look up 20, 25, 30 websites for you, of, the, of where your property is listed for sale. And we put them on a sheet and send that over. Again, something for you to go in, double check, make sure that it's accurate, and then make sure that your client gets a copy of it and that they get a, an email of it. You guys with me on this? Yes. yes. So all, the, all the, the issues that you run into when you go to take the listing and the client hasn't talked to you for three, four, five days are now mitigated, okay? The second thing you want to do, so questions on that part first. Everybody gets it? You know what yes. you do? All right, now, through this, everything you're sending the client, you're printing a copy, and you keep putting into this file folder. Because the market's changing in such a way that we'd like to think that you're going to price the property correctly, and you're going to get some offers and get it sold very quickly. But it is the market that we could be going into I've seen it where we, lately, we've had two, three, four listings that will take and all of them will sell, right? The market I think we're going into where we might take 10 listings and three will sell. So you're going to have to keep track of these listings and hold on to them, all right? I hope I'm wrong, <laughs> but if I'm not, it's better I should tell you now than you call me three months from now and say, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> I got 12 listings. Yay! Uh -huh. Nothing selling. Oh, <laughs> what am I going to do? You get it? Yeah. So we have to have these conversations up front. I've been, that's my 40-something years in the business. I've seen this. Right. Okay? I've anticipated it. I know what to do and how to react. So one of the things you do is you build a folio of all the copies of information you have sent your client, because you're going to go ask for a price reduction. But let me walk you through how to ask for a price reduction and get the chances of getting it, all right? So number one is when you go do a price reduction, go in person. In my opinion, a price reduction is very much like a listing presentation. And you would do, we would do, our listing presentations in person, right? right. Question number one that you ask the client is you re-qualify them. Re-qualify them. When you, when you move, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you said you were moving to Chicago, but you still have to be in Chicago. Okay, what's the time frame? Has it changed? What's going on? It wouldn't be the first time for a seller to change their mind, and they didn't tell us because they didn't want to hurt our feelings. And they are, um, you know, we could be in a situation where we thought the seller needed to sell the property because they were in some financial difficulties, okay? And three weeks after we took the listing, we find out that the seller's aunt passed away and left them $100,000, okay? And they've actually had the $100,000. It's been in their pocket. They cut the house up. They painted the property. Everything seems to be doing much, much better, and they have the money in the bank, and they have no intentions of selling right now, and you're stressing oh over the fact that you want to get this property sold, and you, you want to go and reduce the price. They're not going to reduce the price. They're now not selling. You don't want it to sell. But what about the opposite of that? We listed the house. Everything seemed to be fine. Uh, they didn't seem to have any stress on the motivation. It was kind of on a scale from one to 10, it was at best a, a six. They didn't seem that excited about selling. But two weeks later, he loses his job. And they need to sell and downsize quickly. And they're embarrassed to tell you. They're embarrassed to tell you. But they need to sell this thing. Now, their you thought their motivation was a six on a scale of one to 10. And they're at a six, so oh, okay. But now their motivation's a nine, and you're still thinking it's a six. So you've got to re-ask the qualifying questions. Go through all of them. See if anything's changed. See if they borrowed money on the house. You know, when they 
you first took the listing, it was free and clear. You're assuming it's still free and clear. But maybe they took $300,000 out because they, um, he got, or she got, arrested for a DUI, and they, you know, and God forbid something, stuff happens, okay? And they needed the money out of the house, and you didn't know that. Pretty embarrassing, people aren't gonna talk to you about that stuff. Right. So you start asking questions and you can find out, okay? Well, wait a minute, I don't understand. Why did you put such a big loan on your house? It was free and clear. Uh, well, the truth is, and it comes out in that conversation. You guys with me so far? Yes. 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 Okay, so you go through the qualifying questions. You go through them again at the price reduction first. Second thing you do, because what's going to be in their mind the minute you ask them a price reduction, is they're going to want to know what have you done to sell this house? What marketing have you done? So you're going to bring out all the things you've done. You're going to show them the listing. You're going to show them that it's in Zillow. You're going to show them it's in Century21.com. You're going to show them the ad that you had run on the property. You're going to show them the flyer. You're going to show them everything you have made a copy of, and it just stacks up in front of the client. You guys get this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then you're going to show them the comps. This is what properties like yours are selling for since we listed your home, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. And I think the price should be X. That's the way you go after a price reduction. You guys with me on this? Yes. You bring this chart in. You show them what's changing in the marketplace. You bring a uh, print full screen about the arrows going down instead of the arrows going up. And if I could, I'd show them an old arrows going up. If you kept a copy of that. And now, <coughs> all the arrows going down. Kind of interesting. Yeah. So if you can find one where a bunch of arrows are going up, print that screen so you can use it as an example for the one where you've got all these red arrows coming down. Questions on anything we covered? Could this help you get and keep listings? Yes. yes. Could this help you get uh, price reductions? Yes. 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 Okay, good. Good, good, good. Questions? Where do we get that list for 20 or 30 websites? Uh, when you list your property and you send it to new listing at century21masters.com, double check with Cindy on that. But if you send your listing there, that's what you'll get. Okay? Okay, other questions? So, These. Go ahead. So since, you know, it's somewhat slowing down, shall we increase the number of contacts we're doing daily? Since we're looking for listings every day? Yeah, I think, look, bottom line is we have to talk to more people. Mike talked about this today um, on the video, um, Mike Ferry TV. He said we just have to get more aggressive in our lead follow-up. Uh, and it's my belief, I think it's his belief, that where we fall down, if we fall down in our job, it's in lead follow-up. Yeah. We don't do enough of it, fast enough, hard enough, we just don't. And we've yeah. got to fix that. Yeah, I don't think that we have to talk to more people, but I think we have to talk to more uh, qualified, like the expired and the for sale by owners and lead follow-up. Because if we focus on doing more contact, it's going to be about the number. We're not going to find those. Just call the good ones? Yeah. Just call the good ones. I think you're all right. I think you need to call the great ones. I think you could need to call more. I think you need to only call the people that want to buy or sell now or in the near future. But we have to talk to more people because we're in the talk to people business. And therein is where we get clobbered. We don't talk to enough good quality people, enough people people. We just don't. We don't talk to enough people, whether it be on the doors or the phones. Remember, it's still half the sells, not want to sell. It's still half the buys, not want to buy. And those of you that are working the two bedroom, two bath condo, half the sell areas, you're getting results every single day. That's the stuff that's going on the boards. Ran into it again this morning. It was the craziest thing. Guy, guy came into an open house over the weekend. And he, he has two kids. 
and he lives in a two bedroom, one and a half bath condo. And guess what he has to do? Sell, sell. to buy. Has to sell to buy. Has to. His kids are killing each other. Okay? It's two boys, one room. Not a good combination. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not a good combination. And and the economy's up, ladies and gentlemen. The economy's up. Jobs are up. Pay is up. Everything's up. I mean, I don't care what radio station you listen to, CNN or Fox, it's up. Okay? Good things are happening in the economy. And those are your buyers and your sellers. Now, it's slowing down a little bit from that perspective, but we're still selling a ton of property. A ton of property is closing every day. It's just a little bit less. And we don't care about our competitors, we just care about us, right? Right. There's deals being done, so go out and do your deals. Go out and talk to your past client, your sphere. But you have to talk to people. No appointment, no money. No, money. no appointment, no money. So if you end the week without an appointment, you can't make money in this business. So let's figure out how to get on an appointment. Questions? You guys all got this. Yes. yes. We have an opportunity in this marketplace right now to, because we understand the market, we get it. We know what's going on. We know what to do with it. We know how to dance with the scripts and dialogues. We're constantly working on that every day. You're getting that mess. Is anybody getting tired of the, this message from me? No. No. It's no. no, no, no. the first time I've heard it. Yeah. Well, besides you. <laughs> talk to people. Just get up and talk to people. It doesn't change. From a brand new agent to a superstar, the conversation's the same. Continue to talk to people and get better at it. Learn the scripts and dialogues, take a minute, get into InfoSparks, figure out what's going on there, use it on your presentations, and you will do more business this week. Now let's go out and make this happen. Thank you.